Welcome, this is what is happening on the sun today, the 11th of October 2011. We've had just a couple of sea flares. Is this the calm between storms? Or is the recent burst of activity waning while the sun recharges for the next outbreak in a few months' time? Only time will tell. Today, a relatively simple trivia question. Tonight is the full moon. Last month's full moon was called the harvest moon. What is this month's full moon called? The answer will be given at the end. In the last 24 hours we've had two more sea flares, but they're fairly weak affairs. And then after that the sun seems to have quieted down quite considerably. So let's take a look at the active regions and see why this is happening. We now have six officially numbered regions on the disk. Region 1315, which was the region coming up just to the south and east of Region 1312, as was numbered last night. We also have four new unnumbered regions. All of them on the east limb, two in the north and two in the south. And the two in the south look quite substantial regions and are worth keeping an eye on. Region 1309 was reduced to a single spot overnight. So let's start by taking a detailed look at Regions 1312 and 1315 near disk centre. Region 1312 doesn't seem to have changed a great deal overnight, remaining a single large spot. However, there's been quite a bit of evolution in Region 1315. While some of the spots are smaller, the region is stretched out and there seem to be a few more spots than there were yesterday. Region 1314 in the northeast seems to have developed a single lone trailer spot. However, that may be due to the region rotating onto the disk and making it easier to see those spots. Next we turn to region 1313, near disk centre in the south. This has continued its rapid development of yesterday. There is now a large spot in the centre of the region that wasn't there before. There also seems to be more spots and there seems to be more spread out as well. These are all good harbingers of activity and I'm not quite sure why it isn't producing more activity than it has. However, it was responsible for two of the sea flares. First we'll take a look at the four active regions appearing on the east limb. In the north, there are two relatively small regions just below region 1314. However, the two regions in the south are quite substantial, as you can see here. They are quite large spots, and they look as though they have the potential to develop quite quickly. Now let's take a look at the continuous evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours. And once again, I think concentrating on region 1313 and maybe adding region 1315 uh, is the most profitable thing to do here and I would also go into full screen mode uh, to get the best view of what's been changing. Once again I'm going to show just the low temperature coronal movie which shows some beautiful loops still on the east limb and a lot of interconnectivity between the regions both in the south and the north. In high temperature image from the SXI instrument we can see more clearly the coronal hole that I discussed yesterday and there does seem to be something yet to come over the southeast limb if you look carefully. Although the LASCO data for yesterday was far from complete, I have some of the more recent data here showing that the Sun is still producing some minor coronal mass ejections. And uh, if you look at the Stereo A data, there was a fairly large coronal mass ejection off the back side of the Sun. Any planet on the far side of the Sun would be getting quite a major geomagnetic storm if they were hit by that thing. Though technically speaking, it wouldn't be a geomagnetic storm, would it? The temperature density and velocity of the solar wind has remained remarkably constant over the last 24 hours. The high energy electron flux at geosynchronous altitudes has remained at nominal levels for the last 24 hours. And once again with no major flares, we've had no proton events. If anything, the auroral zone is less active than it was yesterday. But this goes along with the Kp index being extraordinarily low, varying between 0 and 1. Also NOAA has issued no space weather alerts in the last day. So in summary then, the x-ray background has fallen to the B3 level, sunspot number is at 87, the radio sun intensity has increased to 126 solar flux units, solar wind speed is at 360 km per second with a density of about 1 proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are unusually quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are likely, M flares are unlikely, and X flares are very unlikely. The sunspot number should probably go higher. Coronal mass ejections remain likely, the solar wind speed will remain low, and the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next day is very unlikely. The composite coronal image shows us there is no major regions due back over the limb for at least another four days. Now the answer to our trivia question is the hunter's moon, or sometimes known as the blood moon. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.